Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at a range of monitors that are absolutely awesome if you're doing video editing or photo editing. So it's been about a year since I did my last video on uh, choosing monitors. Last year, I was very pleased with the response, uh, the feedback and all the comments that people left. There were some very useful comments there. And I just wanted to focus this year a bit more on specific monitors that I think are really useful and that will give you some sort of idea of what's available out there if you want to get something for the professional and something that's maybe got something a little bit innovative, something a little bit interesting about it. So we're going to be covering six monitors from Asus, Dell, Azo, and BenQ. And these are going to be across a wide, wide range of prices. Every one of them a really good pick if you want something for your professional workflow. We're going to start off with something pretty different. And that's the Asus PG27UQ. This is a 27 inch monitor and it has something unique about it. It's a UHD 4K display that supports 144 Hertz refresh. That's something a gamer would be really interested in. And in fact, ROG stands for Republic of Gamers. So this is a gaming monitor, but as well as being an excellent gaming monitor, it supports 100% of the Adobe RGB spectrum and a very high 90% ish of the DCI-P3 spectrum. Now the DCI-P3 color space is used in video. It's also very popular with Apple and the monitor also supports HDR10. So it's a really solid all round performer. The maximum brightness is a thousand nits and the contrast ratio is 1000 to 1. Now the reason for picking this one is that it is unique. You can't get this good a gaming monitor that also ticks a lot of the tick boxes on the professional content creators checklist. It's maybe not for everyone, but if you're keen on gaming, if you're a content creator, this is a really awesome monitor. One negative point to mention, it has G-Sync, which is awesome, but it can get rather hot at 144 Hertz. So there is a fan that kicks in when it gets too hot just to cool things down. And that's something to bear in mind if you like a zero noise environment. The next monitor is the exact opposite. It's the Dell Ultrasharp UP3218K. This is the first 8K monitor from Dell. It's a true 10 bit display with 1300 to one contrast ratio. It's not HDR, but what it does have is 100% coverage of Adobe RGB and 98% of DC IP3. It's actually 31 inches in size, and that gives it a massive pixel per inch of 280 pixels per inch. That's almost what you would get out of an inkjet printer. So that's amazing sharpness. The size of the monitor will make it, I think, ideal if you're working in 8K, either for video or, you know, this is a 33 megapixel monitor, so it will allow you to edit really large images. This is the equivalent of four times 4K monitors. It's huge. The price is 3,800. It's obviously not gonna be for everyone. The maximum refresh rate is 60 Hertz, and that requires two times DisplayPort 1.4 connections coming into the monitor. So this is not going to be for the gamer. This is definitely for the content creator. But I think if you're working in 4K or 8K, this monitor might be just the one that does it for you. The next one is the Azo Color Edge CG2420. This is a very reliable monitor from Azo. 1920 by 1200. It's got a limited resolution. The size is 24 inches and the PPI is 94. So definitely not the sharpest of the monitors, but it has 98% coverage of Adobe RGB, 98% of DCI-P3. The price is 1500. So it's about less than half the price of the Dell 
and you're getting a much, much smaller monitor. What you are getting though is also a hood, color management software, five year warranty, and hardware calibration built in. I think hardware calibration is something that's really cool to have if you're working on a monitor constantly and you want the colors to be accurate. The next monitor we're looking at is the BenQ SW2700PT. This is a QHD monitor that makes it 2560 by 1440. 27 inches, it's a 10-bit display using FRC and again 99% of Adobe RGB, 95% of DCI-P3. The monitor also comes with a hood, hardware calibration and it's less than half the price of the ASO which is about the same resolution. Actually the ASO CG24240 has a smaller resolution. So I'm going to give this BenQ one because it has got hardware calibration. I'm going to give it the pick of the bunch. I think if you wanted to go for just a decent photo editing monitor, decent color for video or photo, this is the one that you go for. So at $600, this one I think is very good value. The next is the Dell Ultrasharp UP2516D. This is another QHD monitor, 25 inches, giving us a slightly higher pixel per inch of 117. It's another 10-bit display, 100% support for Adobe RGB, 98 for DCI-P3. It comes in at 550, but doesn't have hardware calibration. So I'm not gonna give it the pick. That one will go to the BenQ, but it can support two PCs using a built-in KVM. And like the other Dell monitor, of course it has Dell's excellent customer service. And probably this one has the most amount of connectivity in terms of inputs and USB outputs and so on. So a very versatile display. Finally, we're going to look at the ASO Color Edge CG319X. This is a cinema 4K monitor, so 4096 by 2160. That's a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It's a 31 inch display, the same as the 8K Dell UltraSharp. That gives it a pixel per inch of half that of the Dell, 149 pixels per inch. It's a true 10 bit display with 1500 to one contrast ratio. That allows it to display true blacks. So you can see very deep black colors. You don't get sort of washed out blacks that you get with some other monitors. 99% of Adobe RGB, 98% of DCI P3. It's also another HDR 10 monitor. So it supports HDR and its support for HDR is very deep. It supports hybrid log gamma, perceptual quantization, as well as the standard presets for Adobe RGB, sRGB and so on. It has a number of presets for perceptual quantization. It supports BT2020 and has a number of presets for perceptual quantization, including PQ, DCI. So this is the kind of monitor that you either need the features that it has, or maybe it's way overkill for you. The price, that's hundreds of pounds. It's $6,000. So I think this is the kind of monitor that you either know you need or it's way outside of your requirements. It comes with a hood, color management software, five-year warranty. Now on the five-year warranty, I wanted to mention something about the ASO monitors. Both of the ASO monitors have the five-year warranty. This will cover failure of the monitor, but also deterioration in the display performance. And in regards of that, specifically Azo mentioned that you may get a darkening of the display or you may get flickering of the display. That's something which is covered by the warranty. I did try to find out whether the Azo monitors are flicker free and generally speaking I like to see that the monitors do not use pulse width modulation to control the brightness. For all the non-Azo monitors 
they don't use pulse width modulation. For the ASO monitors, I was not able to find out what method ASO uses to control the brightness. All they say is something very vague about their monitors using dimming technology to prevent flickering. Not sure what that means exactly, but I'm sure since this is ASO and they're a very good brand, they've figured out a way of avoiding too much flickering. So I'm not completely going with a flicker-free moniker for the ASO monitors, but since they have the five year warranty, I don't think you should worry too much about flickering. We're gonna leave it at that and I hope you found some of that useful. If you did, leave a comment, hit the like button. I'll be interested to know what type of monitors you like to use and what sort of features you're looking for. That is it for this one. Till next time, take care, bye.